y'all it's hope here at crafty hope and welcome i believe i'm about to work on the pirate pretties jewelry challenge for april this is a monthly jewelry collab challenge from angela of pirate pretties jewelry this is my second year participating last year the challenge was a birthstone color challenge so you had to use like the color of whatever the birthstone was each month this year she's doing a double color challenge where you have to work two colors together and a jewelry piece so she always gives a, a color well colors for the double color a metal choice a project type and optional fun elements this month um, the colors are black and gray. The metal choice is either silver or gunmetal. The project type is a necklace. And the fun optional element is a chain. And that that has definitely hung me up. I Because I like to try to include the op optional fun element because that's more of the challenge. But also the black and gray kind of snagged me a bit because it's just such a... They're neutrals and there's nothing super poppy about it so but at the same time I didn't participate in the purple and yellow last month because I could not wrap my head around those colors together in a jewelry piece how crazy is that anyway this challenge um the reveal is the 15th of each month so today if you're watching it on the 15th and you can play along and participate either here on YouTube or you could post a picture of what you make over over in Angela's uh, Facebook group. And I'll put links to that below. So she'll have a picture for the month or whatever and you'll comment with your picture. That's how that's done. You can, yeah. So that's that. Um, I may do both but depending on if this works out. So my idea is a little crazy. For black and gray, I have pulled out um, some black seed beads. I don't know if you can see those or not in this baby food jar. So black seed beads and a couple of large black rondelle beads. And then I've got these gray glass pearls that I have a ton of and need to be used. So hopefully this challenge will help me. For the metal choice of silver or gun metal, Mostly I'm going to be using silver for the findings and everything. So I've got some silver wire and silver crimp beads in here. Along with the, just some basic bead stringing wire. And then, of course, the optional fun element is chain. Oh, y'all. Um, that's where I got hung up. And I've got mostly gunmetal and silver chain here. But there's a little bit of bronze and gold and all kinds of stuff. This is, maybe just zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Um, I went through, I took this as an opportunity to go through all of my chain and pull out any little bits of things that um, are just too short really to go into like a necklace or something. Now I could probably split this and make it into a pair of earrings um, and I might. But some of these other ones are just, they're super short. So I am going to figure out how to put them in a necklace. Some of them I need to take off. Like some of these are bracelet extenders and you can see it still has little like dangles on the end. So I need to take some of those off of some of them. Some of them have just a jump ring on the end. So some of that's got to be done that possibly during the process. But this was a good opportunity for me to go through my chain and kind of pull out some things that I don't like and won't use and purge that a little bit. I found some things I didn't even know I had. So I will re-donate some of that to somebody else. Um, all right. Like I said, you kind of see what I've got. Maybe you've already got an image of where I'm going. Um, this is going to be interesting. We'll see what happens. Let's, I will voice over the rest of this and see you on the other side. And hey, you are getting to see this because it worked out, y'all. I'm super happy that this design came to fruition the way I envisioned it. And so I am prepping everything I need, getting some of my beads out. This is going to jump ahead just a little bit because I decided to go ahead and organize the chain by color there. And all I'm doing is I add a pearl bead, a seed bead, and then a length of chain. And then a seed bead and a pearl bead. I was having trouble with some of the seed beads. I think I needed to trim at the end of my chain. But um, this gets a little fiddly in here because I I got off my pattern at some point. And yeah, so here 
it jumped ahead because I, yeah, got off my pattern. So here again is a bit of chain and then a seed bead and a pearl and a seed bead and then some chain. Um, so this is just how I'm starting it with some lengths of chain that are hanging down. And y'all, for a minute, I actually considered that's what my necklace was going to be. It was just a bunch of chain hanging because I kind of liked it. I was like, that might be something neat to do. I was like, no, let me keep moving, going forward. So I added my um, other seed bead, my pearl, my seed bead, and then I'm going to look at it and go ahead and take the length of chain that I started with that first one that's on there and pull it up and go ahead and put it through the beading wire just like so and then I'll add a seed bead if I can do it like I said I was having trouble with the seed beads on this uh beading wire this is some 19 gauge beetle on beading 19 gauge 19 strand beetle on beading wire and so it's fairly good. I've got a little clip at the end of it to keep my, my beads and my chain from sliding off. I've also used like scotch tape on the end. It does get a little sticky, but it works. If you don't have a little clip like that, no worries. It doesn't have to be super fussy. But you see that I got off my pattern again. So I was just having to check myself with this. I was kind of excited because once I made that first loop, I was like, ooh, that looks really neat. <laughs> and so I kept getting off because I was like, what do I need to add next? So this was just a bunch of trial and error of me just getting my beads on. I liked the, this pattern of the the black seed beads with the like silvery gray pearls it ends up looking a bit like a ball chain kind of if you don't look at it close enough so it's it's really neat all right so here i'm just keeping with this pattern and every once in a while checking to see if i need to pull up one of my lengths of chain and reminding myself as well that I need to add as well as pull some up. So not to just keep looping them in those those awesome swoops, I need to also be adding more chain on so that I have more as I go down the line. I was not intending to make this symmetrical in any way. Um, I definitely wanted, you know, shorter chains towards the, the either ends and maybe longer ones in the middle, but it's, you know, I know in full well that these are just a bunch of mismatched chains and it is fine that it's not perfect. So I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm actually gonna speed this up here in just a second because it's the same process of adding my pattern of um, pearl, seed bead, chain, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, chain. <laughs> so over and over again. And like I said, whenever I put the chain on, it's either adding a whole piece or pulling it up from one of the other ones that are hanging. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to play some music and let you watch me get through the rest of this. I will say that that longer piece there will be added in a way that um, I'm just going to pull it up and let the little bit hang and then add the rest later. You'll kind of see how that goes here. This is this is one here where I got just a point. I was trying to look at it a little bit of it up and decided, OK, well, that can hang and I'll add my other seed bead and pearl. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to play some music and let you watch the rest of this.
here are my last little beads coming on there and that is all of the chain and bead portion for the most part i'm going to go ahead and add a clip over on the other side of my beading wire and then take the other one off i just because i like to have a little bit of length on that beading wire when i add my crimp beads or crimp tubes tubes i'm actually using crimp tubes here and I've got my beading, my uh, crimp pliers, <laughs> and I dropped my crimp tube. But all you can do is slide a crimp tube on and then turn your beading wire and go back through that crimp tube, coming out the other side of your crimp tube, making a loop. And uh, make sure that those wires do not cross within that crimp. So hold them pretty securely so that you've got a loop the size that you want on one end. And then bend your crimp tube with your crimp pliers and then mash them down like that. And then you're going to trim the excess of that with some wire cutters just as close as you can get it and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side it's a little more fiddly on the other side because you don't have like the leeway that you have on that first side that if you mess up um, you still have chain on the other side so just be careful with this one make sure your beads are moved all the way down where you want them and then put your crimp tube on again reinsert the end of your beading wire into that crimp tube and pull that end through making sure your beads don't cross and again make sure your loop is the size that you want it and i'm going to hold my loop real quick and readjust everything and then with my crimp pliers i will crimp this bead see i'm readjusting there um my battery does die here while i was doing this so i saved as much of this as i could for you but i'm just doing the same thing on the other side bending that crimp tube and then flattening it down so you can see all of that i oh you know, i guess i got most of it when i got the video I'd, I had my pliers upside down so I was having trouble getting that last little bend there okay so here is I'm finishing that last little bend and then trimming off that excess just like that and so here is this necklace but I want to add those large black rondelles I showed you to give the necklace a little extra length and that extra little pop of black in there I don't know it kind of adds a little elegance this necklace to me feels kind of 80s rock and rollish. I don't know how to explain it but I love it so what I'm going to do is cut a length of that 22 gauge silver colored wire and I like to work in these like foot long lengths, but I'm going to take some round nose pliers and bend it about an inch from the end and then wrap that around my round nose pliers, making a loop. And then I will wrap that little bit of a tail around the rest of the wire. I will end up using, I think, some of my chain nose pliers to help me finish getting that little bit of a tail all the way around the uh, that extra length of... <laughs> Of wire I don't know why I was having so much trouble like my left hand felt like my right hand everything felt a little bit off here and so I get that wrapped if if you don't want to deal with having to pull out that extra pair of pliers you can always just use your chain nose pliers and trim that little tail down I'll slide my bead on and then kind of do the same thing right above that bead I'm gonna bend a 90 degree angle make a wrap around my round nose pliers but then I'm before I close it I'm going to slip it onto that loop we made on the beading wire just like that and then I'll grab my chain nose pliers and hold that loop closed while I take the rest of that chain and chain the rest of that wire and wrap it around that little stem there and then trim it and I'm going to do that several more times I'm going to make sure that little tail is tucked nicely there on that bead and we're going to do this one more time i'm going to show you but on each side i'm getting three beads so just a little chain link of three beads on each side of this like central portion of the necklace so here's my chain i mean my chain why do i keep saying that here's my wire i'm bending it wrapping it around my round nose pliers to make a loop and then twisting that little tail around my wire just below that loop picking up my chain nose pliers to help me get that little tail twisted all the way around the wire 
And yeah, I'm using my hands now just because the pliers were getting fiddly. Do what works for you. Now I'll slide my bead on and just above my bead, I will use my round nose pliers to make another 90 degree turn and then wrap that wire around my round nose pliers and then slip it on to the loop of the other bead and then hold the loop of the bead we're working on closed and twist that wire around that stem that is between your loop and the bead until it touches that bead and then trim off your wire. And like I said, I'm gonna do that one more time on that side and do the exact same thing on the other side so that we end up with a chain of three beads on each side. Now I have two of equal lengths of chain and some jump rings. So I've put a little jump ring on the loop of my bead and I'm adding that chain and closing that jump ring. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, use a jump ring, put it on my chain, I think, put it on my bead and close it. And then I've got another, well, I'm getting out a lobster clasp and I'm gonna put a jump ring on my chain and on my lobster clasp and close it. And then just put a jump ring on the other end of the chain. And this necklace is done. Here, I'm gonna talk to you about it quick so that you get a better idea and a better look at how this all came together. I hope you enjoyed this. All right, so that was a bit fiddly, but it is better than or exactly as I imagined. There was no plan to that, y'all. I seriously just took those little bits of chain and if it was too long for what I had, I think my only problem is this one. And I may, because this is split, go ahead and unclasp it and pull it up just a little. Um, and move that one but the rest I tried to match like this one to hang a little extra but if it was too long I let it loop and come back around and if it was too short I just made sure to go ahead and connect it and no it's not going to match perfectly if you plan this out and cut a bunch of chain and did it you could do that but I am happy with this this is what I had envisioned and um, I just need to go make sure that the length of my chain is right it may be too long for this but that's okay i can cut chain down <laughs> all right guys i hope you enjoyed this if you are joining in on the pirates pretty jewelry challenge i will hopefully be watching your video or see it over on the facebook page i'll go ahead and tell you that for next month if you want to plan ahead for may the double colors are peach and pearl white the metal choice is copper or silver you're making a bracelet and your fun optional element is filigree so that is for may all right i guess i'll start thinking on that too i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions let me know if you liked it of course thumbs up mash that subscribe button and i will see y'all later